Hello, Uta Hagen here of Uta Hagen channel. This is the camera that I used to take the 50 pictures of the garden and the sunsets and the snowdrops and so on um, for my memoir uh, in the curated woods, True Tales from a Grass Widow. And if you are in my shoes, suddenly and recently, um, I would really recommend that you splurge on a good camera and uh, develop a hobby of taking nature pictures um, because it is really quite a healing thing to do. Um, and that was really part of my healing process during my writing. Um, and this, of course, is... Uh, Trans Widow Testimonies, Juliet Part 3. Um, and uh, But before I start with that, I, I really wanted to thank uh, the new subscribers and to thank everyone who does watch and share my uh, nature videos, which are going to become better because I'm going to learn how to do them, you know, with the camera. <laughs> I use my cell phone for them at the moment. Um, and uh, that first Snowdrops uh, nature post that I did, um, I think it's 18 seconds or, or something. Just the fact that it went over a thousand within 24 hours was really quite remarkable. Um, uh, let's see, I'm trying to think. Uh, Yes, so so thank you. We're almost up to 600 subscribers. It seems like we have a really nice community in the comments. I really, really do appreciate comments. Please feel free to comment and please do uh, click the like button, not because I'm ever going to monetize. I am never going to monetize. Um, I, I do not need money. One day I might figure out a GoFundMe or something in an effort to help trans widows um, with legal fees and things like that, but that's a much bigger idea for later. Um, but if you could please just click the like button because um, it affects how many new people are going to have this in their YouTube feed, apparently. And I do know that people like Nettie, who work in companies such as YouTube, um, do tend to put channels from women like me um, into a shadow banning uh, situation. Uh, Vaishnavi Sundar <clears throat> of Lime Soda Films, where you can watch the trailer for Behind the Looking Glass of her upcoming documentary um, uh, interviewing 30 of us. Uh, she has felt that she's been shadow banned and that the number of views on it and the number of subscribers isn't up to what it uh, truly is. And that's a little trick that happens. And often, like with Juliet's husband, uh, soon to be ex-husband. Um, uh, they are working in tech and they're very clever. Now, the the real topic of what I'm going to update you on Juliet is money. And uh, she was able to force um, through the attorneys uh, to force uh, documentation you know, forthcoming. And that's something that I do not believe that I got the real documentation from Nettie uh, back in the mid 1990s when our divorce was happening. I think he had other auxiliary bank accounts and what I needed was a forensic accountant. Now that's another expense, but uh, this has to do with the fact that actually these men working in tech who have betrayed you and gone out cross-dressing and done goodness knows what uh, while you have been at home with the children 
uh, they've been spending money, you know, and telling you uh, wrong, uh, wrong things about where they were. And um, you're dealing with all of these betrayals and you're trying to play catch up. You're trying to run just to stay in place. And uh, I will forgive myself for not getting that information, but I feel that my attorney should have been more demanding. And I'm very relieved that Juliet's attorney basically said, there's going to be a problem if we don't see the bank accounts. Because like many modern married people, uh, they had significantly separate accounts. There was one joint account for the child, uh, which was some kind of auxiliary account that uh, uh, Juliet had worked out with her husband, Jack, that he would start for their child, who's now two years old. And actually, she found out when that documentation was uh, presented that he not only spent um, over the equivalent of 50,000 US dollars on himself <laughs> in the last 12 months, meaning from when their child was one to two, he also drained the child's account. Now, I started custodial accounts for my children after they were born, and uh, I was the, the adult, you know, in charge of it. Um, and of course, when my children turned 18, that money went over to them. Uh, I, just, I just can't imagine. Uh, I cannot imagine uh, dealing with your own dishonesty, spending money that has been set aside for your child. That's something that I don't understand. And basically, Nettie did the same thing. And these therapists are encouraging these fathers of children who ideate themselves a female persona, these therapists are encouraging these men to spend money on them, <laughs> and which is often in cash, I think, because they have to hide it. Or separate, now there's all kind of fancy ways that I don't even know about, you know, whatever it's called that you put money into. And um, uh, Juliet doesn't really know if Jack was spending money on clothes and then throwing them away, or uh, he was saying he thought he had some version of ADD or ADHD, or maybe he was on the autism spectrum, <laughs> and he was going to therapy, he said. But I have a feeling, and Juliet has a feeling, that he was going out cross-dressing and that was his therapy. <laughs> because, you know, uh, these tech companies have affinity groups within their work uh, internet intranet uh, systems. And so then there are affinity groups of these fathers. And he, she found out he had already connected up shortly after the birth of their child with this such affinity group uh, in the major tech company that he works with. And this, this all fits together. It's a, it's a pattern. Um, and uh, that's about it for now. <laughs> Be well always in mind and body. Go walking. Go observing. Take the pictures.
and be well.